Hey, what's everyone? Yeah, I know. I shaved my head and I have this cable here because I'm going to hook up my phone. I just finished recording a 700 subscriber episode for you guys, uh, which is part of the Venom Vlog series. I'm going to make it episode 25. So enjoy that. Uh, everyone who's watching this episode, look down in the description box below. I put 25 codes to 25 different Marvel comic books. Uh, these are just a bunch of digital codes that I had that I've been saving up for a while, and I was hoping we would hit 700 subscribers, and I wanted to share those codes with you. So if you can, go down there, grab like one or two books, but save some for other people if you can. Uh, try to spread the uh, the symbiote love that we spread on this channel, and uh, you'll see Thor books. I think there's like eight codes or ten codes down there for Thor. Those are all the same Thor books, so just use one of those, and then grab yourself one of the other ones. I have like uh, Phoenix Resurrection, issue one or something down there. Um, I have some... Uh, other Marvel stuff. I can't even remember everything that's there. But all that's down below. Oh yeah, Clone Conspiracy, some of that. Uh, but thank you all so much for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. So let's get into the episode. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. And today I'm going to make some chicken. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I've been thinking about it all day when I was at work. I was like, oh, I can't wait to get home and make that chicken. It's uh, Tuscan flavored, so uh, I hope it tastes really, really good. It looks really good. Um, and yeah, just, uh, just trying to, you know, Peel, keep my eyes peeled for movie news uh, for Venom, and I unfortunately haven't been able to, you know, find anything yet. It's been slow. I think uh, some of the actors that were in Atlanta are just starting to return because a lot of them went home to see their families. So, uh, you know, we'll have some updates probably next week. So for today, uh, you know, we'll, for today and the next couple episodes, we'll just talk either about comic stuff or, you know, actually I want to thank you guys because we crossed uh, 700 subscribers. So maybe I'll put this in front of that episode too because we just crossed that last night and I'm very excited about that. So thank you guys so very much. I'm glad this show is growing. I just saw and someone pointed out to me earlier that pretty much all my videos on the, the Venom blog are over 50 views. And I think that's probably the record. Out of everything I've ever done on here consistently, that's definitely the record. So uh, thank you guys for that. Thanks for the support so much. Let's get into the next topic. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any more movie news. I was digging around today again uh, in between cooking and now, and I still didn't come up with anything. So what I'm going to do is actually celebrate 700 subscribers. And I didn't really know what way to do that. I, I always look for the significance of things, or if I have money, I like to go maybe do something. Like we did like a hot wings eating challenge or a hot sauce challenge. Uh, me and my friend Deadeye a while back when we hit a couple hundred subscribers or followers on Twitch. And I think we were at the 600 followers on YouTube and like 300 followers on Twitch, like around the same time. So I did like a joint video where we went out and like ate like these 12 different hot sauces that just got worse and worse and worse. Um, so I'll try to put a link or something like that to, to, to that episode down below. But the uh, 700, I was like, you know, there's only one thing I have that's significant to that number. Um, and not that it has to be all the time significant, but there's something I, I don't do a lot on this channel, which is tell stories. Like a lot of people are like, oh, you should make a video series where you tell stories about your life, you know, as your memories have come back to you over the years um, from your aneurysm, like you should, you know, as you're dis rediscovering things and, and remembering things uh, more clearly, like you should make a series where you're talking about these memories. And I thought about it and it's a good idea and it may be something I still do. Uh, but for now, I was like, well, I actually have something that happened a couple years ago that I don't need to remember too well or like work hard to remember because it's it's pretty clear in my mind. It was the time that I actually stopped a, a robber, I guess, a burglar. Um, in a way, he wasn't burgling, I guess. He was just trying to steal. So I, I stopped a thief at Golden Apple Comics. And the reason why the number 700 is part of this is because it was actually for this comic book called Amazing Spider-Man 700 by Dan Slott and Humberto Ramos. And this book had just come out and Golden Apple had a policy of, you know, limiting it because we wanted as many people to get it as possible because we knew there was a big moment in it. You know, Marvel was telling us, like, as we were leading up to it, this is going to be a big issue. You know, make sure you, you know, uh, get it. It's like, uh, you know, order as many as you can. Uh, we'll give you incentives, extra variant covers, that kind of stuff. But also, um, there is a big moment in this, and it's not going to be something you're expecting, uh, which it wasn't. Uh, it was something that I kind of railed against at first, and I actually um, gave some criticism to, uh, to Dan Slott, and I wasn't one of the mob that, like, was like screaming death threats at him. I was just like, hey, I, I'm not sure I'm going to be into this, uh, but hopefully, you know, I turn around. Uh, turns out I did. I thought the book was fantastic. And then the Superior Spider-Man book that followed this was really fantastic. So he sold me, you know, I, I was hesitant, but he sold me. So this book, like I said, was only one per customer. Unless you bought variant covers, you could get like one of each variant cover. And so this guy came in and, uh, and he was really rude right up front. He wanted um, 20 of these books. And we were like, look, we can't sell you that many. Um, my my manager there, uh, Sharon, uh, 
great, great lady. Um, she was there and she was like, you know, I, Hey, I, I can't sell you this many. The limit is one. Maybe I'll sell you like three or, you know, three to five of them. If, if you, if you really want them that bad, if you're a collector, uh, but we need to give as many people a chance to buy it as possible. Of course, this guy didn't like hearing that and he blew up. Uh, there was other people in the store and he's, you know, he was getting, you know, elevating. And then I started to get uh, anxious because I have bad anxiety. And when I hear someone yell, it, it's, or when I, I think someone's being extra rude or, you know, whatever, I have like a reaction to it. So I went up and I tried first. I was like, hey, look, I'm sorry. This, we can only sell you this many. I, I, you know, this is just the way it is. You know, you know, please, please calm down. And then I went back to the back because I was like opening boxes and stuff. Um, and then so what happened to, I'm like holding this up like just weirdly. Sorry about that. Um, I'll just put the image right there. How about that? No, just do that. Um, so yeah. So anyway, this guy was, you know, he was just upset, wanted multiple copies. So then, uh, you know, Sharon, she was about to give. She was like, you know what? I just want him out of the store at this point. We'll just take his money. It's fine. Uh, but then he started grabbing more copies and stacking them up on the counter. And then it just got ridiculous. And the guy at, at, raised his voice again, started escalating the situation. And then I raised my voice and said, look, you can't have these. That's just the way it is. Uh, and then he started getting louder. And then unfortunately, all the other customers, like there was not a ton, but there was a couple other people. And I felt bad because normally I don't like to be unprofessional and, and raise my voice in that kind of environment. Um, it's not fair to the, cus the other customers. Uh, but this guy was really just being really just in insane at this point. We get him to leave the store. And I'm like, look, you can't you can't have any. We would have sold you maybe, maybe three or five of them. But now you can't have any. You got to go. So after, you know, basically pick up the phone being like, look, I'm calling the police. You got to get out of here. So he starts to leave uh, and he goes out into the parking lot. Sharon at this point, you know, she's older. She's starting to tremble. So the encounter with the guy was was really um, intense for her. And she was like, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm shaking. I said, that's okay. At this point, I think the other customers, or one, all but one, had left the store. And I took Sharon. I said, look, let's walk you to the back, get you some water. Why don't you just hang out, drink some water back there? And, uh, and she said, okay, thank you so much. Uh, you know, so I'm walking her back. I'm trying to calm down because at this point my heart's still beating. The guy was like in my face yelling at me. So I'm like, okay, I, I just, I got to calm down too. Maybe by helping her, it'll help me calm down. Uh, and so I bring it, I'm bringing her to the back and I hear behind me, boom, 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 you know, and I'm thinking I'm going to get hit with something. So I, I have sh like, I, you know, I'm kind of like in front of Sharon like that. And I turn around and the guy had stopped, you know, like a few feet behind us or like maybe it was like 10 feet behind us. Um, so close enough to where I could hear his you know, footsteps coming in and running in. And he just grabbed a bunch of the comics off the shelf and turned and beelined it right for the door. And without even thinking, I went right after him. I, you know, I, Sharon was okay. I knew she was in the back of the store and I ran. And this guy, he runs out. And when you go out outside of Golden Apple, there's the street right there, Melrose. It is like, you could get hit by a car just running out without looking. This guy ran I was right behind him. I saw that he didn't get hit. I didn't see him like fly in the air or anything. So I said, all right, I'm going to just keep going. I'm not going to, I'm going to block out my surroundings and I'm just going to get this guy. And now a, a tip to anyone out there who's in this situation. I worked for a, a small shop like Golden Apple and that store means a lot to me. Um, hopefully I don't get too emotional here, uh, but going through my aneurysm, going through rebuilding my life, getting back on my feet uh, physically and, and uh, emotionally and everything. That store was always there for me. They gave me a job when most people wouldn't give me a job. They let me work there. Um, this place meant something to me. So stealing from them like really worked me up. Um, and just seeing this guy doing wrong to the store really set me off. So I, again, like I said, I was running after him. He gets out to his car. He moved his car from the parking lot to a place across the street. Um, I, you know, I go like this to like to grab him. Um, but he's at this point turning to like to, so he could open his car door. I knocked the comics out of his hands and then he turns around and he's like screaming at me and he's like, I have a gun. I'm going to kill you. I have a gun. Stay away from me. The guns in my car stay. He's like yelling things like that, like, you know, over and over and over. Like, I'm going to kill you. I push him. And then I grab the comics and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to get the books. He grabs his car door and tries to throw it open to try to hit me in the face because I'm like kneeling down. Luckily, the car door, you know, didn't come all the way. Uh, so that was really lucky because um, he would have just hit me right in the head and who knows what would have happened there. So, uh, so and then I you know, held my shoulder up and I saw him kept trying to open the door. I'm grabbing the comics and I'm like, just leave, just leave. And he's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. He's like, I'm going in my car. I'm getting my gun. And so he leans over into his car or he's like, like, you know, get, cause he can't he did open the door. And then I start pushing on it. Cause I don't want it to, you know, keep, I'm just like instinctively like, all right, he's opening, he's trying to hit me. So I'm like, you know, trying to keep it from pushing out. Um, even though it, it probably wouldn't have hit me cause it failed the first time 
he climbs to the, he's like trying to get into the car. And at this point he's screaming, I have a gun. So I jumped up, I dropped the comics, jumped up and leaned on the car door and just pinned him like this. Like the car door was shut on him and I'm just holding all my weight on him. And I said, I said, I can't, you know, I'm like screaming a bunch of stuff, but I'm like, I can't let you get the gun. He's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm like, stop saying, like I'm screaming at this guy and we're just screaming in each other's faces. There's people on the street watching, uh, you know, and I'm freaking out my heart's racing the idea that i could be shot whether this guy you know was true or not if he had a gun i was freaked out and i'm like just go just go like i'm screaming other things at him we're being very nasty to each other and i'm like you know it, you're not gonna kill me i'm not gonna let you kill me and he's like i'm gonna kill you i'm I, even if i get away today i'm gonna find you i'm gonna kill you and he's just screaming uh, all this stuff at me and i my heart is like it, it just going a hundred miles an hour um so finally i get to a point where i hear i think it was sharon or someone was you know or someone on the street was like like please stop please stop uh and i'm like leave just leave just leave i'll let you go just leave and he's like let me go so I drop down and I grab as many of the books I can, uh, which actually I think I got most of them. And I ran, I start running across the street in case, cause I'm expecting like to hear a gun. I don't know the, luckily what I heard was tire screech and the guy got in his car and he drove off and I, I had this big sigh of relief and I was like, Oh my God, uh, that was just intense. It scared the crap out of me. And I went back in and of course, Sharon was like, are you okay? Are you okay? You know? And she's like, don't do that. Like if someone steals, just let them steal, you know, like, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It, it was just like a fight or flight thing. It was someone was doing wrong to, I didn't, didn't even think about it that much. It was just like an instinct thing. And later I was just like, you know, I, I wanted to protect the store. I wanted to protect Sharon. I wanted to, to do the right thing, I guess. And it was serendipitous that it was a, a Spider-Man book. Cause if most of you who don't know his origin, if you don't know his origin, is all about a kid who let a burglar go uh, or let a thief go. And that person ended up killing his uncle, Spider-Man's uncle Ben, someone close to him. And for me, I, I don't know. There was just, it, it was just instinct. I, I just didn't want to let this guy go. And then when my life was threatened, I was like, all I wanted was the guy to go. I was like, please go. Just don't shoot me. Just leave. Don't kill me. Um, and uh, then luckily the, the, you know, the police came. I gave him a, a, a description we, you know, of the guy. We, we had you know, Sharon there as an eyewitness too, uh, which helped out a lot. And, uh, and they got the guy. And, and, and then we ended up going to court. He tried to like, you know, sue and, you know, for, for battery and stuff. It's like all I did was I knocked the comics out of his hand. And then I pressed like the car door against him um, when he threatened to kill me. And I, to me, that was me just trying to survive. Had nothing to do with hurting the guy. I just didn't want him to get the chance to kill me. Um, and so luckily, the, you know, everyone, the cops, you know, were like, all right, thank you for the information. We went to court. The guy, you know, uh, didn't win trying to, to sue us. He tried to sue the store, all this other stuff. Luckily, he didn't win because he did wrong. He was he was the bad guy. Um, and I was just, you know, maybe doing something I my job didn't require me to do, but it, it was something that I felt I had to do. And I was glad I stopped this guy. And I'm glad he didn't get away with it. And then we heard he stole other things from other places and, and that, that he constantly goes to court and tries to sue people. And he creates these situations to try to, you know, get back at people and, uh, and, and, and try to, and try to like win, you know, get money and stuff. And because he's like, you know, some like older guy failed actor that, you know, never made it in Hollywood. And, uh, and he just lost his mind, I guess, and just started creating these scenarios where, uh, where he puts people in harm's way and threatens to kill them and then steals from them. And it's like, yeah, that guy is just not a productive part of society. So I, I was, I was, you know, when I heard all this, I was like, well, I'm just glad he's, you know, didn't kill me. I'm glad I didn't, you know, lean too hard on the door and kill him. It's best. We just go, you know, he goes that way. We go this way. And we just, you know, all just, you know, take a breath. And we realize it was a stupid moment in all of our lives, I guess. Uh, but it was one that I wanted to share with you guys, because like I said, we hit 700 subscribers and 700 uh, issue of Amazing Spider-Man issue 700 is what uh, is, I think it just tied into it. I was like, oh, so someone at work actually said, you know, you should tell that story too. Like I told him, you know, the story and he was like, you should tell it on your YouTube channel. So yeah, so this book, I've kept a copy. This is one of the ones that were stolen. The back uh, cover is a little crumpled, but I, I kept it in a bag and board anyway. And this is a book I've been holding on to for a couple of years now. And I'm, I'm, it's just, I think five years. I think we're at five year anniversary of this comic coming out. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just my story I wanted to share with you guys. So again, thank you all very much for supporting this channel. Uh, the 700 subscribers, that means the world to me. Thank you so very much. Um, you know, we don't have to talk about the story, but if you want to tell me what, if you read this comic, what your thoughts were, were you kind of negative on it at first, like I was, and then got turned around uh, as I read it, and then as I read Superior Spider-Man, because I totally took a 180 
Um, unfortunately, a couple years later, I would uh, review. I would keep reviewing Spider-Man books because Sp Spider-Man. I love the character Spider-Man, um, and I love uh, Dan Slott's run on the book, especially. I've always defended that guy's run. Uh, unfortunately, though, right before I quit Twitter. Uh, Dan actually blocked me and I can't remember why I don't know if I was caught up in a conversation with like someone who was like talking to him and I got caught up in that or if like he saw because I think I tagged him in a couple of positive reviews and maybe he started watching my channel and saw that I did a negative review on issue which is funny because anytime I've ever said something like oh I'm not feeling this or this is not very well done or very well structured it'll pay off like in like 10 issues later there, there'll be something that ties back to that and I'm like wow like and I would always put my foot in my mouth. So it was, it was really weird to be blocked by Dan Slott after going through this <laughs> event. Uh, the, the editor on the book, Steve Wacker, he actually wrote me a nice tweet and was like, hey, good job. Thanks so much. Because I think what my my manager did was uh, Ble Rich Johnson at Bleeding Cool like wrote my store manager and was like, hey, did this really happen? We heard this happen. And uh, and Ryan was like, yeah, it did. You know, uh, it was Seek. And, and uh, Rich was like, oh, you know, do you mind if we you know tell that story on our website? So uh, once I guess that got out there, like Steve Wacker wrote me and a couple other people at Marvel wrote me, which was really nice. I, but again, I as much as I wish I could say, oh, I did it for you guys. Uh, it really, I just did it because it was instinct. Uh, just stopping that guy seemed like the right thing to do in that moment. And I, and I didn't want Sharon to be hurt. And I didn't want the store you know to to be uh, stolen from um and i didn't want the guy to get away with it i think that was more m most of it was i just I, I took it so personally at that point and and i gotta you know since then i've learned to not take things like that so personally like it's you know if, if someone steals it's probably best to let them go in case they do have a gun in case they can't hurt you in case they get you outside and you know it's you don't want to put your life at risk or something like that um but uh you know sometimes you just act on instinct and, and that's what i did in this situation all right, that's it for me. I rambled enough. Thank you all for the 700 subscribers. And make sure, like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you look down in the description box below. There are 25, because this is episode 25, I'm putting 25 codes down in the description box for Marvel Comics. So this is just my big thank you to all of you for supporting this show. We're over, like I said, 50 views on pretty much every episode of Venom Vlog. And I hope that just keeps growing. I, and I can't do that without you guys. So thank you. Thank you for putting this show, uh, start, you know, it's it's on the map. It's people are starting to write me and say like, hey, I, I caught your show. I caught, and I, you know, see people in real life now going like, hey, I finally started watching your channel and I'm really like the Venom stuff. And I'm like, hey, awesome. I've been trying to get you to watch my YouTube channel for years. And, and, uh, and but I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're finally made it so thank you all i seriously thank you this has been a a really rocky year for i think a lot of us for me definitely uh but i'm i get to end with a big smile on my face and to know that uh that this show is doing well is is fantastic it makes me feel really good and i'll continue it i even if i'm the only person doing a weekly venom show <laughs> uh, I will I will be that person. Although I think there are a few other people out there that are doing it, keeping up to date on the movie on YouTube. Uh, so make sure you check them out. And then also I think there's a site called the Venom site uh, and I'll put a link down below. I just came across the site recently and they're posting a lot of stuff about the comics and any, any type of movie news, I think. So they cover a lot of stuff too. So check all of them out. Share the love, share the Venom love. There's plenty of symbiotes to go around. Well, we're going to become Venom Incorporated now. Here we go. All right. I'm not Lee Price. Don't call me Lee Price. I don't like that character. No, I'm kidding. Uh, all right, everyone. Thank you so much. That's enough for me. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the future. Peace.